Free agenda uh, meeting for February the 15th, call to order. Um, this morning we have invocation from Commissioner Freeman Hardison. Ooh, I've got the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, then we've got approval of amendments. Any adjustments to the agenda? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chair. Good morning. Uh, we do have a couple of budget amendments that we'll be adding uh, that we'll present to you and we'll go over. Uh, uh, there are two from uh, social services. Uh, the only other adjustment we wanted to make sure you were aware of, if you look at number five under consent agenda that is placed up at your, um, your seats, uh, we added that after the uh, agenda packet was sent out. Um, uh, if you're aware, we had the project announcement for uh, Mount Olive Pickle on Wednesday, and now we need to do the public hearing for the incentive agreement. Uh, so that will be on March 1. Uh, so we're adding that. What is herring? <laughs> <laughs> Misspelling. Uh, that, <laughs> that is I no <laughs> misspelling. Uh, I don't know if that was something I was supposed to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know we're in the South, but yeah. hiring, hiring. <laughs> well, as I said the other day on, on Genoa, do you know what I mean? You know, so, um, I did just yeah. that. So, um, but that, those are the only changes that we have. But just want to make sure you're aware of number five, the public hearing notice. All right. Um, and we, we'll have that uh, hearing on March 1st. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and we'll let you go from there. All right. Thank you. Uh, number one is motion to approve 2022 National FFA Week Proclamation. And I do believe that Kevin Johnson will be here uh, for that reading. And then number two, this was a request from the Highway uh, 70 quarter uh, uh, committee, uh, resolution requesting acceleration of construction scheduled projects R-5829 A and B Princeton Bypass and R-2553 B and C Kinston Bypass. And then we have unfinished business. Motion to approve the recommendation of the Wayne County Board of Commissioners Facilities Committee to instruct Mosley Architects to proceed with a schematic design for the combined DSS Health Department building. Uh, again, there's a, a memo or email from our, our architects talking about the process that we've got to get to this point, uh, asking for this direction. And then we have consent agenda. Uh, number one is budget amendments, and I'll turn that to Allison. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Your first budget amendment is for the sheriff's office in the amount of $34.31 for controlled substance tax funds that have been received. Your next budget amendment is for um, literacy. This is for reimbursements um, for expenditures that where they where they do participate in some contracts for telephone and cable um, for pricing, but then they turn around and reimburse us. So we are anticipating that reimbursement and appropriating against the expenditure. We also have the same type of budget amendment for Gateway. Um, this covers vehicle supplies, other communications, and rental of copier equipment in the amount of $5,000. Um, and this is to anticipate the reimbursement from them as well and appropriate those expenditures. You, you, you said anticipate. Yes, sir. But there's a possibility we won't get it. it no, sir. It's just, it's what typically when we, when we are um, budgeting the revenue, we just say we are anticipating the revenue. Okay. No, they're, they're, they're very good about paying on time, so we're not worried about that. <laughs> um, your next budget amendments, there's two together, and these are also for literacy and gateway. So we are making a couple of accounting changes in just the way that we track these payments. Um, these are for the salaries and related fringes that we pay on behalf of gateway and literacy, but they do reimburse us in full for that, all of that. So this is, once again, um, anticipating those revenues and expenditures. You have a budget amendment for the library. 
They have received additional money for the raising of reader grant for this fiscal year in the amount of $34,176. They are appropriating that to salaries and um, fringes for part-time salaries. You have a budget amendment for, I'll let you get through that. You have a budget amendment for solid waste totaling $23,600. Um, they have had to use their funds for COVID and other illnesses. Um, so they are reallocating funds from salaries and wages and um, regular part-time to part-time help, which would be more of like your, um, your sort of temporary help, so to speak. We have a budget amendment for the Sheriff's Office. Um, they have received uh, seized property fees totaling $62,796.69. Um, you see different ones listed here individually. I, I believe that's several cases that may have been um, reimbursed, not reimbursed, but paid through the state that they had been waiting on to be resolved. What? So this is income for the sheriff's department? Yes, sir. And this what, is... What, what, are, what can he legally spend that on? It has to be used within the guidelines of the seized property fund. So that this is your federal forfeiture funds, um, your control in state controlled substance tax funds, and it has to be spent only within the confines of that program. Um, if we purchase an asset, the money has to go right and sell that asset. It has to go right back into that fund. Can you get us a um, a printout in regards to the? allowable expenditures? Sure. I mean, they have a handbook on it, so absolutely. And I, I think very simply, it's supposed to, to get additional equipment above and beyond the regular budget. It's not supposed to supplant anything that they're uh, they're purchasing, but above and beyond to help with, well, with drug okay, trafficking. Okay, I'm going to go right to the point then. Well, can we not use those funds uh, for, the, for the command center? No, uh, sir, that's already been looked into. So you can't? No, sir. It, it'd be surplanting, sir. How would it be surplanting? Else we've already committed to it. So. Well, then I'll ask the question this way then. Uh, can we use it to purchase radios for the command center or for the uh, for, for the sheriff's department? I, I think it has to do really, and again, that goes back to the guy well, that's, that's drug. Equipment. Drug for drug assets. Or, okay. Yeah. I mean, and, and the only reason we question it, I mean, you know, if it was just a few thousand dollars, you know, six, what, $62,000 is a whole lot of money. I mean, we, we're not accusing or right. speculating on anything. We just. You know, $62,000 is $62,000. We researched the possibility of using seized property funds on the mobile command center even before the funds were committed because you asked us to do that. And we talked with um, the sheriff's office and Michael Dawson and the ones that work specifically with this program, and they looked into it, and the, the guidelines do not allow for us to do that. Okay. <clears throat> well, like I say, give me a list of what it does. We will. Allow. That's, that'll be, that's an easy... That's, we can get that easily for you. All right, thank you. For the health department, um, you have a budget amendment totaling $5,500, and it's a reallocation. Um, this is within the COVID Enhancing Detection Fund, not fund, but line items, um, to allow for additional purchase to, purchases to be made within program supplies. We have a budget amendment for the health department totaling $357,238. Um, these are, this is an agreement addendum adding funds to the COVID-19 vaccination program. Um, this will be used to cover vaccination time work and cover purchases of syringes and needles for the vaccination program. Back, back up on that for a minute. Uh -huh. So what's the difference between salary wages and professional services? Um, professional services is when we contract with, um, like with United Way um, for, you know, we actually have a contract with an outside party. Salary and wages other would be, um, you know, it could be like a... Um, so it's not considered like paying nurses or... 
Like no, that staff would or anything like that. No, if it's in if it's our regular positions that are already budgeted, it's that would come out of your salary and wages line item, just your regular salary and wages line item. Does that make sense? Yeah, I reckon. Okay. It is, that's just I, I just say a whole lot of money going through there. I'm just trying to figure out where it's going. So that's fine. We're good. Okay. Your next budget amendment is for cooperative extension. Um, they are making a, a couple small changes in their the way they handle their postage, and so they've turned in an old postage mis machine that was being leased, but there was unused money on that, so they're they're getting the money back from from that machine and anticipating the money to be used for future postage expense. But they they will start using. The I, be, I believe they've agreed to start using our central services right, right. Um, system, which is where he goes around and picks it up and, you know, charges the departments on our machine. Okay, you have another budget amendment for the health department. Um, <clears throat> this is a this is to reallocate funds from part-time extra help to salaries and wages, um, and this will be used to uh, cover the physician extender position. Um, they are actually getting rid of a part-time position and that they they really don't need any longer and uh, putting that money towards a full-time physician extender position that they need. So is this a federally funded thing? Is this a federally funded thing? Um, I it, guess what I'm asking is, is this like for a year? And are we going to have to pick it up after the fact, or is this something that, that they continue on? It would be something that would be continued, but right now um, they're probably using COVID funds for it. I don't want to speak on behalf of them because they have their own finance office that manages how those grants are allocated, but my guess would be that those activities are being used for COVID right. funds right now. However, we've had physician extender positions for a long time. Oh. But they've only been as a part time, and this one they're converting over from part time to full time. Well, they they've had fourteen position position extender positions, so they've had those positions. They um, are inactivating. I think it's a part time. Um, I think it's like an office well, it's manager got it right position. There. Back, back back up the back. Well, it's got it on the same thing. It says reason for the above request. I was wanting the position budgeted but not filled, and there's been some concern over the past couple of years that it was not needed. That's why it wasn't filled, right. and now they're going back and saying we do need the position right. filled. So, so it's always been a position that's been on our books. Um, it just hasn't been filled, but now they're saying that it, that it is needed. How long have we been without it? I don't know I'm that. Not I would sure have to that. find years. out. I, I'm not sure, but they're, that's what they're saying. I think they're, they're trying to do some things a little bit different as far as services that they provide, and that's why they're asking that the position be backfilled. One question. Yes, ma'am. You know, each meeting we see, you know, budget amendments for COVID. How much money have we actually spent on COVID? Well, so the health department is getting money separate from the county. I mean, yeah. I say separate, yeah, still under our are, count. But I would just, out of curiosity, just right. would like to know how much we have spent on COVID. I could certainly get the health department because because they would be the your big spenders. Uh -huh. um, I could certainly see if they could provide us a report. And if of some you sort. if you would tagging on what Ms. Barber said, find out how much we're going to have to spend after COVID is gone that we've tagged on. From do, COVID. Do you mean position. this position or just total? In general. Okay. I mean, that's, I mean, it's just in general. <clears throat> and that, that just not the help, that goes for everything. I mean, the DSS has got some help to fall right. whatever. I mean, yeah, I mean, we just keep. I mean, because we, we, I mean, government's notorious for, for, you're funding something for a short amount of time, and then, it then you leave it, and then you're, you're sitting there you're still trying mandated. to figure out exactly we're having to keep funding it. So. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up, Ms. Moore. All right. Your next budget amendment is for the Fremont Elementary School Capital Project Fund. Um, 
So this budget amendment is doing a couple of things. It's establishing a capital project ordinance for Fremont Elementary School. Um, and we are budgeting for the pre-construction services with Daniels and Daniels in the amount of $175,251. We are also moving over the <coughs> expenditure of the land that was done about two years ago. Um, and at that time, we had not set up a capital project fund because it really was not to the point that we, sh we could do that. So we're moving the expenditure over so we can account for the purchase of the land. And then we are budgeting for just the pre-construction services. Now, once we do find out about the lottery application, the, the one that we just submitted, um, and we find out what our total funding will be, um, then we will come back with a budget amendment for the total amount of the project. And right now, the way I've got it is that the general fund is sort of advancing those those monies to cover this. And then once we hear back from the lottery, we will um, make sure we reimburse the fund and account for all of that. Does that make sense? It, it does. Um, where are you taking that 483 from? It's coming from general fund balance right now. And not from their sales tax? Right. What do you mean right? Right. You mean they are taking it from the sales No, fund? I'm saying we are taking it from the general fund, our general fund. And why would we do that and not take it from... Because the, sales tax is being used separate, for debt service. Yeah. But there is a balance that is in I, their sales tax um, and their, their funds. There's a balance there. Why would you not take that? I, I would say it's probably an, an e, a cleaner uh, uh, fix to d just do it from general funds since we can just reimburse us back. We, again, as Allison said, we're just forwarding um, uh, the proceeds until we get the grant application in or the grant funding. Because the, the, the sales tax has to be very specific. General fund, you know, we can just be very, you know, it, it's, it's our funds. But we'll reimburse us back directly once we get the funds. All right, so we will be reimbursed. We will, yes, sir. We will be reimbursed. Okay. So, right. so, and I know government accounting. So, it's got one point two seven five. That's that, it's the total. So, when anytime we move money in and out of funds, we have to do dual entries, and those funds have to balance. Um, and, and that's what makes that number look like it's going up. But if you look at the top, yeah. the pre-construction services are budgeted at 175, 251. And, and that goes to? That's to Daniels and Daniels okay. for pre-construction. And then the transfer says 308, 398. That was for the purchase of the land two years ago. Uh -huh. um, so that's, that's, going, that's going to? This is that's going to our new fund, right. which is fund 485, and that's our Fremont <clears throat> Elementary School project fund. And then the 483 is for. That's the total of those two amounts that is coming from the general fund to upfront okay. that money. <clears throat> so it's actually 483,000, not. The, the total amount that we are advancing from the general fund, yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. I don't think you'll ever understand governmental accounting no. for oh, 10 years. I have no. <laughs> Double entry. Out of balance. Okay. Um, your next budget amendment is for um, workers' comp. I must have skipped one. <clears throat> it's for workers' comp in the amount of $220,000. Um, we have had unexpected claims in that fund this year, and in looking at our projections through the rest of the fiscal year, we do need to anticipate additional expenditures to get us through our, the rest of the fiscal year. We do have enough funds in within the workers' comp because it's a self-insured fund. We do have enough money to be able to appropriate fund balance so that we don't have to hit the general fund with this. However, we are going to prop probably increase our premiums for the upcoming fiscal year to cover these increased costs. But this specifically is related to a couple of large claims we had this year. Which, which, department, which department has more claims? Public safety. Public safety. Sheriff and EMS. So, so is that tagged onto the insurance policy that we got? We're, we're self-insured on workers' comp. So we, you know, we we 
pay a third party to kind of manage the, the, the process for us. But Who's we're third party? Sure. BSI. Um, yeah. um, I can't remember what I can't for. remember. Yeah. <laughs> but called BSI. You know, we put right. it out for bid this past year, right. and you all um, selected BSI well, we for our <clears throat> third party. So are we doing anything to mitigate um, so that we have less accidents and injuries in those uh, departments? We, we are working on it, yes, sir. We are. There, there's um, uh, Chip's been working. With, I think Aaron's been doing some safety things. We've been working with it, but we are trying to mitigate some of those issues, yes, mm -hmm. sir. Um, are we working on hand on um, you know devices where you don't have to use cell phones while you're driving, making that mandatory as well? I believe those policies are in place yeah. already. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, how many stretchers are we short so right now, the power lift? Uh, that, that's probably part of what part of the problem. We're, we're still, I'm not sure the number that we're short, but yeah. Um, but we're, we're in, you know, that'll be part of the CIP moving forward also in next year's. Okay. Good. I, you well, good? I'll ask a question later about that. Okay. We're good? We're good. All right. The next budget amendment is for, um, this is for $10 million to transfer funds from general fund balance to our county capital reserve fund. These funds will remain in the capital project fund until the county determines um, how to use these monies for future use. And once they are put in the capital reserve fund, they must be used for capital. Okay, then you so have, oh, I'm where, sorry. Where's that money coming from? It's coming from general unrestricted fund balance. Do you remember the changes we had to our audit at our last meeting? So once it's put there, it can only be used for capital. capital. For capital, that's right. But it's not specific for any capital improvement, right. just anything. That's there. right. The county has a um, <sighs> has a capital reserve fund, which is a it's it's a legal reserve fund that's set up just for capital purposes, and so it can it can stay in that fund until it's to be used for a future capital project. Okay. I'm just trying to make sure we ain't tying our hands just on one specific thing. So you're saying as long as this capital improvement, we're right. Okay. Good. That's right. right. Yeah, it's not specifically for one project or another. It is for the overall um, C CIP uh, or capital. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you had two additional budgets walked on, uh, numbers 304 and 305. You should have physical hard copies of these. They are both from Department of Social Services. <clears throat> Your first one is number 304. And this, we had a budget amendment for this program the last time as well. They've received, I think there was a modification in the amount of funds that they're receiving. Um, so they are about, they are appropriating an additional $530,567 for a total of $1,061,135. This is for pandemic LEAP funds. So this is your low income energy assistance program. Um, it has a very short turnaround in when it has to be spent by. So that's why we're requesting to walk this budget amendment on. So basically this is money to, that we get to help people with their lot bill or whatever. Yes, sir. And, and um, I believe the, the first payment that we received was going to be used specifically for households that had children within a certain age range. Yeah. And this one will be used for um, households 60 years or older disabled and receiving um, certain services. And so these have specific strings attached to how that can be paid out. Okay, and, you're... And, and these, oh. this grant came directly to DSS? Yes, sir. This is part of their, I believe it's considered, um, let me find it. I believe it's considered federal funds. Um, let me see. Oh, yeah. Yes, it's 100% federal dollars. And these funds must be dispersed within 30 days of the date of application? Yes, very, very quick turnaround. <laughs> I mean, so they're going to have to be... <laughs> 
I assume that they have uh, somehow or another advertised that these funds are available. We will hope so. Well, we have a budget amendment after this that is probably related to it. Um, your budget number 305 is to request overtime money, um, $21,500. And it says for economic services staff, so I'm, I'm making an assumption that that would be their same staff that would determine the eligibility of these applicants. But they are reallocating it from salaries and wages to um, overtime. They've had vacancies, um, and you know there's a, a time, a, a certain time span that goes on before they can get these new hires fully trained, and and so they're going to have some overtime with that. So am I reading this that it's. Um Oh, forty-three thousand dollars worth of overtime. No, no. Where, where, where are you seeing this? It the says on the back it's 50, 50, 50, 50 federal, state, fifty county costs. Is it? Oh no, sir. Um, it would be so. The revenue's already been budgeted. So on this budget amendment, you're not seeing any revenue at all. You're seeing just a reallocation. So they're moving money from salaries and wages that were already probably cover 50-50 like that to overtime. Does that make sense? <laughs> this is all within their budget. It is. within their. Right. They have their and own. There are no do additional dollars right. from the county that are in, uh, uh, funded here. Right. right. That's right. And, and we do get reimbursed on, on the overtime as, as well, part. I guess that's what I'm asking yeah. is, is if, if we're getting reimbursed from the federal and the state, are we supposed to keep it with the overtime separate? They, 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 they do. do. They do. They, they do. have. They yeah. have very specific yeah. tracking within the state this, software system. This they is have just to do. for the expenditure side. We'll get the revenue side, and, and, and that'll ca have the uh, reimbursement in it. Do we know offhand what the eligibility requirements would be? Um, it, it just there's a page in here on my copy that just says. Um, let's see. It says that payments would be completed um, for LEAP payments for households 60 years or older, disabled, and receiving, receiving DAAS service. Um, and then NCFAS is authorized and posted a report for households with children zero to 10 um, applications to FAST help for payments to be issued. So I think there's two groups there that okay. this will apply to. So, so but now we don't know if someone that receives Medicaid might receive it or not. We I don't know that. I, okay. I, that would probably be a, a question from one of the program supervisors. Yeah, that, it, it is income-based mm -hmm. and, and household, and, and like I said before, that with respect to number of children in the house. But but it, it you know that's why we need the income workers to make sure that we do the qualifications. Yeah, and I think I think it's important, um, like the chairman said, how do we get the people to know that this is available so we can work on some type of marketing and let let them know between DSS and the county. I think that will help tremendously. Um, I, I would say that they are, but I'm not sure exactly what the plan is, but I will get with Kim after this meeting and try to let you know how she's planning to get the word out. Thank you. Okay, and I believe that wraps up what I have for you. One thing. Uh, yes, ma'am. The airport, I didn't see the budget amendment for the airport. I thought I seen it in the... Uh... It's a separate line item um, on... It because, because it's a work authorization you all have to approve, it's a separate line item um, number three under consent agenda. So... Yeah, um, we're going to be bringing that up under to just in a few minutes. Okay, if there's number no questions on that, I will go to number two. Motion to approve the lease of property located at 3173 South US 13 Highway in Goldsboro to David Rutledge Jr. for a term of up to 10 years. Okay, a Goldsboro or a Mount Olive address. This is Goldsboro. Good morning. I can explain this. Um, this this property is located uh, near Grantham Middle School. Some of you may remember this is the parcel that we purchased before we made the sewer improvements out to the school. There was some hope that we could use this lot for a um, septic tank for the school, and that fell through. So since then, we've owned it. We have leased it out to several individuals in the community who have used it for farming. I believe one person actually had some cattle on there for a little bit. Um, as of right now, it's not being uh, leased. 
The, Mr. Rutledge um, is an adjoining property owner and reached out to the county. He has interest in using the property. He's going to maintain it. I believe he, he told me he wanted to use it for a small garden that adjoins his property. Uh, this would save facilities from having to go out there to cut the grass um, because during the summer they have to go out there and mow it. Um, I did. I know there has been some talk about possible use of one quarter of this for a future capital project. Um, there is a provision in this lease that if you all decide you do want to move forward with um, improvements, uh, I think it's under 60 days notice, we can exempt a portion of this property um, as much as we want um, and so we can use it for those improvements if later down the line that's decide what we want to do. So, and the, the rental rate is $800 a year that's consistent with our rates for other farm leases throughout the county um, is for a, a term up to 10 years so it'll automatically renew each year um, by general statute you can't go over 10 years for a lease so at the end of 10 years we'll have to address it at that time so if we decide that we need to do something different we got 60 days to I believe yes it is 60 days I'm it pretty doesn't sure. say anything if he's planted his garden and it's in so no we we just give him notice that we're we're gonna exempt a portion of this parcel and then we reimburse him for any amounts paid so for example if he's already paid eight hundred dollars for that year and then in the middle of the year we say no we need an acre or half an acre or what have you then we just reimburse him the money they saw we you know we prorate the amount of acreage we're not obligated to reimburse him for the tomatoes that he's got on there. <laughs> okay. And he under he understands all of this. He's fine with those terms. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Uh, then motion number three, motion to approve amendment number one to work authorization number one, apron pavement rehab at the Wayne Executive Air Jetport pending final division of aviation approval and appropriate budget amendment. And again, we have uh, uh, been working with uh, Brandon Gray, our airport director. You do have a copy of a memo from him or an email from him kind of explaining uh, the reason for the amendment was some underground tanks uh, in the location and some soil contamination. So that we had to, there were some environmental issues that we needed to address uh, that was not anticipated. How much was that amount? The amount is, if you, I remember something, thirty-two thousand or uh, something, thirty-eight. Yep. Yeah. Um, Fifty-eight thousand six thirty-five. Does that come from the grant, or I mean, if if, if it can be covered by the grant, and depending upon the you know what is left over, the grant will pick this cost up. But if not, then it's a cost we will have to pick up. And at this point, if I might, um, the bids for the uh, pavement and so forth are very much under what has been allocated, so right. it should be covered under right. uh, the, the the North Carolina grant. Right. That's the tanks on the north north end of the tank of the. Uh, Paper, well, it's in both places. Yeah. There's a problem at the underground uh, storage tank, which is going to be removed. But they also have located it over here where the green tank is. Right. There is some contamination there as well. Is that just from, from out of planes or is that? It's got to be spillage because yeah. it's not on the ground. Is well, that... it's uh, not only spillage, but evidently there is there's some procedure that they do that evidently causes some of that spillage. Um, and they are working on making sure that it's not repeated. Thing. Is that part of containment going in there too, or do I know? Is that some kind of containment section going in that above ground tank? Yeah, and we, we are actually uh, asking them if we could uh, actually concrete that area where the planes would actually be parking uh, in order to fill up. So there are some other changes that they're trying to make to mitigate that happening in the future. That it is before that before that green tank is 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 paved. That's paved, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're, but what they're doing is I've, I've noticed when I was out there, they'll actually pull off on the edge of the grass. Oh, is that right? Well, so. Well, at any rate, we, we've got uh, some contamination there that we've got to take care of. But that'll take care of all the underground tanks at the airport, correct? Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, and, and again, that does the the if you do approve of the work authorization, that includes appropriate budget amendment. Okay. All right. Any more questions on that? And then what's next? Oh, sorry. Number four, motion to approve changes to the Wayne County Conflict of Interest Policy. And introduce. Yeah. Thanks. So this is. Um Good morning again. This is pretty straightforward. Um, back in June of, I believe it was 2018, maybe 19, um, uh, if you recall, uniform guidance came out, and those are federal regulations that required the county to have a conflict of interest policy that was adopted, adopted by the governing board. Um, in the most recent, recent state budget, we received a handful of grants, one for the sheriff's office, one for our court system, for drug court. Um, those uh, state grants require that we have a conflict of interest policy that's in place addressing state funds. So um, really all we have done is change our existing conflict of interest policy to make it applicable to federal and state funds. So really you can just see, I mean, all, all we've really done is just added and state to the majority of this. So um, just small tweaks, but this was needed um, to have in place so we can, those state grants can get dispersed. Okay. All right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And then uh, again on your new uh, agenda sheet that's in front of you is number five, motion to establish a public hearing on Tuesday, March 1st, 2022 at 9.15 in the commissioner's meeting room in the Wayne County Courthouse Annex. Uh, the purpose is a hearing, uh, hearing to receive public comments regarding a proposed economic development incentive grant to Mount Olive Pickle Company. And again, this was what was announced last week uh, at Wayne Community College. And uh, very appreciative to the city and to the community college and to Mount Olive Pickles and WCDA for the work that's been done on this. Okay, any questions on that? All right. And then county manager's report, board of commissioners committee reports, uh, then work session with the UNC School of Government, and that will be with John Stevens. Uh, but John will be here and, and um, go over, you know, uh, uh, opportunities of, of, since we are a new board, of how uh, the board can work together and some strategies to work together. And that'll be about 90 minutes. And that'll be, we will recess the meeting about 10 minutes, Mr. Chair, and then go into John's presentation. All right, and then after that, we've got lunch. We do have lunch, yes, sir. Okay. All right, anything else? All right, we're going to recess until 5 o'clock. Good morning.